I don't know about you, but me, I only have a certain amount of time in my day to to waste, really. I uh, record videos to tell people about Jesus. I try to post things on my web pages and my blogs, and I try to develop networks that people can study and know about God in a more intimate and personal way so they'd have a personal relationship so they could study on their own and discover for themselves what God has for them. I don't really have a lot of time to waste because I record videos too, like about eight to ten a day almost, you know. Sometimes fewer, sometimes more. But you know, I took a cue from Chuck Smith a long time ago. Somebody told him about some thing that they wanted him to read or something they wanted him to do, and he said, well, you know, he'd pray about it, and probably think about it, you know, if he could get to it, he, he might, but he said, if that's what you're interested in, you would do it, you know, but I need to focus in on what I do, you know, and I listened to that, and I went, well, that's pretty cool. So this person <laughs> sends me this link or somehow makes it available to me and says it's a 12-part series, 11 hours, all on Know Your Enemy. <laughs> and I said, my first thought to my mind was, I already know him. <laughs> what, what would I possibly need to know more in 11 hours that I haven't already learned in a simple read of the Bible? <laughs> But this was different. This was dramatic. This had things like Illuminati. Ooh. And it had Trilateral Commission. Oh. And it had the latest, greatest, you know, Nephilims and, and, you know, how to make all this fit into world history, you know. And my God, you know, we had to get rid of Daniel because that was out of date, you know. We didn't need Daniel's, you know, Nebuchadnezzar's dream, which is biblically inspired. We have our own way of taking everything and making it fit into history now, and world history, and how, you know, the Roman Empire is this, and then now the Roman Church, and then this and that, and the other thing, and we're going to cram it all together, we're going to put it out there in 11 videotapes so that you could spend all that time to know your enemy. Why? <laughs> I always thought, if I'm busy doing God's will, I don't have to worry about what Satan's will is. If I'm busy doing God's will, I don't have to worry about what man's will is. If I'm busy doing God's will, matter of fact, I don't think I have to really worry about anybody else's will. If it's thy will be done, I think whatever comes along will be his will. Call me simple. Call me stupid. But I really don't have time to waste on discovering, oh, you know, 37 different ways to cast out demons, you know. The demon of gluttony, the demon of this, the demon of that, the this, that, and the other thing. Whatever fleshly a desire that I could blame the devil on, please. <laughs> the 27 different ways in order to ascertain whether or not you have the Spirit of God in you, or whether or not that's just an artificial God, and not the real God, because the real God is a Yahoo, which is a hoo hoo, which is a Yahoo hoo hoo, which we get to hoo hoo do, and the latest goo goos. You know, if you're getting all this junk from the internet, if you're spending a lot of time watching worthless videos and meaningless topics, why bother? You know, we don't have a soap opera God. He doesn't change his plot line just to fit your circumstances. Matter of fact, I think we have a Bible that has weathered through the storm, has been tested, found tried and true. I think we can prove that it's accurate. So why would I want to listen to all this other junk? Why would you? Why would you want to know about the enemy? Why do you want to know about other topics when Jesus probably is the most important person in your life? And if he isn't, can I make a suggestion? Maybe you're focusing in on the wrong thing.
Maybe you made a big mistake and you're headed in the wrong direction. Maybe you're looking at the wrong place at the wrong time for the wrong reasons. Sure, there's a lot of things that are interesting, you know, I mean, <laughs> why the sky is blue is interesting. Why the moon looks bigger through the dust is interesting. There's a lot of interesting things, but how much and how well do you know Jesus? Have you heard his voice? Have you walked in heaven? Have you talked with God today? Have you walked in his presence knowing that he's walking right beside you? Have you sat down and had a meal with him? Because if you haven't done any of those things, and you think that those are exaggerations, then what are you doing busy about all the other things that are distractions when you should be having those things that he said you could have? Literally, God could walk in your door because he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He didn't say, Behold, I stand and I'm making up this analogy so that you can somehow apply it to the heart of your heart, so, you know, make it up into some way that doesn't fit because after all, your heart doesn't have a door and how could it be a door because after all, you can't open it from the inside or the outside. That's just a picture. That's not the scripture. And he was writing it to Jesus. He's writing it to Christians. So Christians, he was writing from the perspective of standing in heaven in the midst of the seven candelabras and he's writing to the church and he's telling those people who are in the church that if they would overcome it, they should be likened unto him and that he would find fellowship with him and they would be one with the Father and the Father with the Son even those as those two are, though so too we would become likened unto them so that we too could have fellowship with the Father and that we could see the Father and know him and hear his voice and be like Jesus did as he saw only those things that were pleasing to his Father and did only those things that he saw his Father doing so Jesus could walk into the midst of seven candelabras and he could say to the church that behold I stand at the door knock for the man if any man open if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come in and sup with him if you don't know that, man, what are you doing getting to know the enemy? Hey, drop your battle plan somewhere else. Get to know Jesus. I think that's a little more important. He might be standing at the door and knocking right now. Maybe you better go check what that doorbell is. And I don't mean in your heart. <laughs> Jeez. Studying, studying, studying world history and making it into some kind of dramatic presentation of how, oh, from the moment that it began, man has been the evil one and manipulating things. And it's evil men that have been somehow, you know, a little bit of Satan, but mostly evil men doing these evil things by evil groups. Please. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Hebrews 4.9. The rest includes victory. And the Lord gave them rest round about. The Lord not me, not you, not listening to a video, delivered all their enemies into their hand. Joshua 21, 44. He will beautify the meek with victory. An eminent Christian worker tells of his mother who is a very anxious and troubled Christian. He would talk with her by the hour trying to convince her of the sinfulness of fretting, but to no avail. She was like the old lady who once said she had suffered so much, especially from troubles that never came. But one morning, the mother came down to breakfast, wreathed in smiles. He asked her what had happened, and she told him that in that night she had a dream. She was walking along a highway with a crowd of people who seemed so tired and burdened. They were nearly all carrying little black bundles, and she noticed that there were numerous repulsive things. These evil-looking beings, which she thought were demons dropping like little black bundles for the people to pick up and carry. She saw the devils and the demons in them. Like the rest, she too had her needless load and was weighed down with the devil's bundles. Looking up after a while, she saw a man with a bright and loving face passing hither and thither through the crowd and comforting the people. At last he came near her and she saw that it was her savior. She looked up and told him how tired she was and he smiled sadly and said, you know, my dear child, I did not give you these loads. You have no need of them. They are the devil's burdens and they are wearing out your life. Just drop them and refuse to touch them with one of your fingers and you will find the path easy and you'll be as if born on eagle's wings. He touched her hand and lo, peace and joy thrilled her frame and flinging down her burden she was about to throw herself at his feet in joyous thanksgiving when suddenly she awoke and found that all her cares were gone. From that day to the close of her life she was the most cheerful and happy member of the household. You know, the bottom line is, if you're really looking for demons, you'll find demons. If you're looking for God, you'll find God. If you're looking for Jesus, you'll find Jesus. But if you choose to carry on with all these other things that you think you need to do, 
then you're going to be obvious by the rest of us who enjoy God's presence and enjoy God's grace and enjoy God's mercy and enjoy the fact that God has taken care of all that. It'll be obvious because you'll keep pushing, working, thrilling, spilling, and acting like it's so important to be all about something else instead of Jesus himself. Whenever it's something else and it's not himself, you know that somewhere someone's self is in the way.